$610? Are you serious? What do you guys think? Full heal or full deal? Hey everybody, what's up from Pokemon Classics? Reminding you all that the classics never go out of style. Today we're in for another episode of Auctions of the Week, and this week was a really interesting week for a number of reasons. Not only did we see some of the big heavy hitter cards show up, like Gold Stars, Shinings, and First Edition Base Set, but we also saw a more subtle resetting of the market, which we'll talk about. Also, stick around to the end to see the Auction of the Week. That's always one of the highlights, and it's kind of a throwback to top 10 Pokemon in order to honor him. Anyway guys, let's roll into some auctions. All right, I wanted to start out with some first edition base set and check in on that market. And we'll start it off with this first edition PSA 8 Charizard from base set. And this one sold for $12,600 on Fanatics. Now Fanatics also has a 20% buyer's premium. And when that's tacked on, that actually brings the price to just over $15,000. Now that's a really good price if we take a look at Pokedata IO and view some past sales data, this is up considerably from where this card has been selling for in recent years. So there may be a little bit of momentum, some steam being gained by those first edition base set Charizards. We also saw the Blastoise sell in a PSA 9 for $3,120. Again, we need to add that 20% premium. The Chansey sold for $1,590 in PSA 9. There's a Clefairy that was sold on eBay. This one went for $1,126. Now, if we take a look at probably the least popular of the Hollows from base set, the Magneton sold for just $660, which feels a little bit low to me. I think somebody got a decent deal on that one. Next up, we have the Mewtwo, one of the more popular ones in the set, and this one sold for $1,500 even in a PSA 9. Then we've got the Ninetales, Ninetales selling for $1,275. Next up in the lower tier, the lower echelon of base set is Nidoking, selling for $750 on Fanatics. Then we have the Polyrath. Polyrath is another one that's generally not viewed favorably by collectors. Polyrath selling for $900. Now, I also wanted to showcase a few CGC 10 Pristines for base set, because these ones don't come up very often. And the Venusaur in Pristine 10 sold for $960. The Blastoise was almost double that at $1,770, and then we have the Charizard selling for $9,600. Now interestingly, there was also a PSA 10 copy in the same auction, and that one sold for a little bit more at $9,900, so kind of showing how the vintage market uh, views the CGC Pristine 10 versus the PSA 10, and that's not always the case with the more modern market. We also had an assortment of popular vintage tens come for sale this week, starting with this unlimited Scyther from Jungle Set, selling for $421 in a Gem Mint 10. We also had the unlimited Snorlax from Jungle Set, this one selling for much more at $2,699. The first edition version of this Snorlax also came for sale on Fanatics for $6,600, and after the buyer's premium, that places it in a pretty hefty territory for a pretty hefty Pokemon. In fact, if we look at the price chart on that one, this card has been hovering in that $5,000 to $7,000 price range for quite a while, so it makes sense that that's where it would end up. The Dragonite from Fossil Set in First Edition PSA 10 was another one that was auctioned off. This one sold for $5,160, which again, seems to be slightly on the uptick in recent months. Now we had the Dark Blastoise from the Team Rocket Set in PSA 10 sell for $2,070. We also had the Blaine's Moltres from Gym Heroes, this is one of my favorite cards from the set. It's an absolutely gorgeous hollow pattern. This one sold for $3,050. Now Zapdos is my favorite of the legendary birds and Rocket Zapdos is a card that I used extensively in deck building back when I played the game. So I had to include the CGC 10 pristine copy of it. And this one sold for $935. We also saw the Espeon from Neo Discovery, very popular evolution. And this is the rookie card for Espeon, selling for $2,130. And you can't do Espeon without the Umbreon. We've got the original Moonbreon card in PSA 10, first edition, selling for $6,600. We take a look at the price chart on that one. This card is held really steady, much more so than many of the other cards that have experienced more volatile swings. So a shout out to Umbreon. Popularity is the probably the underlying reason here. Interestingly, I found a couple PGC cards. These ones I don't see come up very often. It's a very obscure grading brand, at least for Pokemon. And the Typhlosion 17 sold for $1,175 in a Gem Mint 10. They also had the Lugia for sale, which sold for $1,996 in a PGC 10. Now for comparison, there was also a PSA 9 Lugia that went for sale on Fanatics. 
selling for more than the P PGC-10 at $2,130. So that's a pretty big market discrepancy there, considering the grading companies. Before we move on to modern, I also wanted to highlight some Vintage 9, some of the more popular ones that sold this week. Starting with this CGC-9 First Edition Dragonite from Fossil Set, selling for $510, which is a pretty good price for that card. We also had the Dark Charizard in PSA 9 selling. This is the first edition copy for $765. Next, we've got first edition Erica's Venusaur selling for $475 in a PSA 9. Pretty difficult card to grade in a PSA 10. Another one that's really hard to grade in a 10 is the Feraligator from Neo Genesis, and this CGC 9.5 copy sold for $560. We have the Slow King from Neo Genesis, another card that's pretty much impossible to grade in a 10. This one sold for $375 in a PSA 9. You also have the Ampharos from Neo Revelation in First Edition PSA 9, another card with a very low population in a PSA 10. This one sold for $265. Next, we have Houndoom from Neo Revelation, popular Pokemon, great looking artwork, and that's going to factor into a price point of $390 for a PSA 9. We also have the Suicune, one of the three legendary dogs, which are technically cats, uh, but that's beside the point. This one in a PSA 9 sold for $745, so some pretty strong prices so far for the PSA 9s. Lastly, we'll wrap it up with another Dragonite. This is the Light Dragonite from Neo Destiny in PSA 9 First Edition, selling for $429. Gotta love Neo Destiny, it's my personal favorite set. Next, let's talk about Modern. Now, Modern has been getting hit pretty hard in recent weeks correcting down from its all-time highs, and I think you'll see that in some of these prices. First up, we have the Umbreon VMAX in PSA 10, the Moonbreon selling for $1,226. If we take a look at the price chart from Pokedata IO, you'll see that it peaked out at about $1,600 before correcting about 20 to 25%. Nothing to be too concerned over, and it does seem to be stabilizing at this point. We also have the other Evolutions, including the Sylveon VMAX and PSA 10 selling for $269, the Espeon VMAX selling for $310 in a PSA 10, the Glaceon VMAX, a little bit more on this one, selling for $321, and then the Leafeon VMAX selling for $345. Now we also have to include the Eevee, even though this one is from a different set, this is from Twilight Masquerade, but the Eevee has been doing pretty well, selling for $225. Next, we'll take a look at the Gengar that ate everything, the massive Gengar VMAX, selling for $546 and some change in PSA 10. Now, there's also a CGC Pristine 10 that showed up, and this is where you're going to see that premium for the Pristine 10. This one sold for $705, in this case CGC outselling PSA, uh, like I said, the premium there on the CGC 10 Pristine. We also have the Charizard EX from 151 selling for $320 in a PSA 10. And then the chase card from Lost Origin, the Giratina V selling for $610 in a PSA 10. Now, if we take a look at the price chart on this one, you can see the obvious dip over the last couple of months. But what I wanted to direct your attention to is the sales volume down at the bottom. This card is still pretty liquid. There's a lot of copies of this that are trading hands still. My personal favorite of the full art cards is the Lugia V from Silver Tempest. This one sold for $316. Then we have the Magic Carp. This one from Paldea Evolved in a PSA 10, selling for $560. Next, we have the Rayquaza V Max. This is another one from Evolving Skies, which personally I like a little bit more than the Moonbreon. This one sold for $530. This is the card that's been taking the market by storm recently, though. From Twilight Masquerade, we have the Greninja EX in PSA 10, selling for a hefty $510. Again, taking a look at the price chart on this one. It's dropped a little bit in the last month or so, but not nearly as much as a lot of the other full arts. This one is still fueled by a lot of popularity right now. All right, it's time for some Japanese cards, and we're going to start out with all three of the original CD promo cards, and the illustration on this Blastoise is one of my favorites. It's got the Hydro Cannon pointed right at the camera, right at the viewer, and I love it. In Gem Mint 10, the Blastoise sold for $390. Next, we have the Charizard, and this is a really old cert number on this one. One of the earliest graded Pokemon cards, and this one sold for $899.99. Finally, we've got the Venusaur, the least popular of the three, but one of my favorite artworks of Venusaur personally, and this one sold for $306. Moving into some Mario and Luigi, we've got the Luigi Full Art Pikachu selling for $3,720 in Gem Mint 10. Again, don't forget to factor in that buyer's premium as well. The Mario Pikachu is always the more popular of the two. It's a great crossover. This one sold for $6,000 even in a PSA 10. 
Next, we gotta highlight some of the Scream cards. We got the Scream Pikachu selling for $2,600 in a PSA 10. And I always thought it was interesting that Mimikyu outsells Pikachu by a notable margin. The Mimikyu sold for $3,400. Next up, we've got the Stamp Pikachu card. This one in a Gem Mint 10 sold for $361. And uh, to take a look at the BGS Black Label Premium, this is a pretty substantial difference, but in a Black Label, uh, pristine 10 this card sold for $1,225 Finally, I wanted to showcase a couple of the team rocket special edition anniversary box promos and the Giovanni sold for $8,700 but not to be outdone you have Jesse James and Meowth finally one-upping their boss selling for $9,900 all right, guys, one of the things that made this auction cycle unique was the sheer number of shining cards and gold stars. So I want to do a quick recap of prices on some of the best cards in the hobby. First, we'll start with the gold stars, and we have the Entei gold star in CGC 10 selling for $610. The Raikou in CGC 10 sold for $600. And then the Suicune was the winner of the three selling for $660 again in that CGC 10. Now we had the Pikachu gold star in a PSA 10, very difficult card to find. For $7,100. In fact, if we take a look at the price chart there, you'll see that the gold stars have also been relatively stable ever since the boom, and uh, that's a really solid price point for this Pikachu card. Next up, we have the Alakazam gold star, one of my personal favorites, selling for $1,150 in a PSA 9. We also have the Celebi gold star in a Gem Mint 10, selling for $2,800. Then we have the Groudon gold star, this one in a PSA 10 selling for $4,501. That $1 made all the difference. We've got the Gyarados Gold Star in PSA 9 selling for $3,950. Very popular Pokemon and a great looking Gold Star here. Next up, we have the Mewtwo Gold Star in a PSA 10 for $3,970. And then we have a couple of Charizard Gold Stars. One CGC 10 sold for $6,900. Then we also had a PSA 9 sell for $4,550. Next, we have the Reggie Rock Gold Star and a PSA 10 selling for $2,650. And then the Umbreon Gold Star in just a PSA 9 selling for $7,500. <sighs> That's a lot of gold stars. We have two more though, including the Latias Gold Star in CGC 10 selling for $7,500. Then the big winner of the gold star market this week was the Latios gold star in PSA 10 selling for $13,200. And this card has a very low population in PSA 10 of just 28. So it's understandable why this card would earn such a premium. And as you can see, there's almost no sales volume. This is a card that just doesn't trade hands very often. For Shining cards, we had five of the eight from Neo Destiny sell this week, including the Shining Celebi in PSA 10 first edition selling for $1,440. The Mewtwo in first edition PSA 10 sold for $3,600. As you can see from the price chart there, these have also been pretty stable. And I think a large reason why is their rarity. There are 216 copies in PSA 10, which is still relatively low for such a popular Pokemon and such a popular style of card. The Noctowl in PSA 10 sold for $930. We've got the Steelix in PSA 10 first edition selling for $1,110. And then finally, one of my personal favorites, the Tyranitar first edition PSA 10 selling for $3,600. That's a lot of shiny cardboard. All right, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. And now it's time for our auction of the week. And this week, I actually have three cards that have some unique history to them that I wanted to share with you all. The first is the Trainer Deck B Blastoise, which features a base set Blastoise artwork, but it's actually a non-holographic copy of the card. And it includes the red Trainer Deck B insignia on the backside. This card is really unique, it's rare, and in a Gem Mint 10 condition, it's almost impossible to find. This card sold for $6,300 this week. Now, the next one that I wanted to share is equally unique. This is a Growlithe card in German, but it features a Magic the Gathering backside. This is an early test print card, and in a CGC 8, this card sold for $8,100. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the same copy of the card sold a couple years back for like $20,000 or $25,000. I don't remember exactly, but it's still a really cool card nonetheless, with an interesting backstory and history to it. Finally, I wanted to share this sample Pikachu card, selling for $15,600 in a Gem Mint 10. Now, this card was produced out of contract and it never should have existed. It has a Japanese backside to it, the sample stamp down in the bottom right corner, and it's a Pikachu, so it has a lot of factors working for it, as well as the history to back it up. 
Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this week's Auctions of the Week video. And I really enjoy doing these. It keeps me in tune with the market and looking at cards that I otherwise wouldn't take the time to appreciate. Well, one thing I do appreciate is all of you. So thanks again for sticking around to the end of the video. I'm Pokemon Classics reminding you all that the classics never go out of style. We'll see you next time with the next video. Till then, stay well, have fun, and don't forget to enjoy collecting. Bye, everybody.